Buona giornata and welcome to my channel. My name is Tanya. if you're new here. So today we are going to do kind of a different video. I wanted to talk about some terms used when it comes to cosmetics. So hopefully you guys find this interesting because this is a topic where I'm constantly like, huh? What? What do I mean? Like, uh, what is vegan? What is cruelty free? What is clean at Sephora? Like, what's, what's the deal with all this stuff? Because I feel like they're trying to scare us. Um, but anyway, so we are going to be discussing all of that. I hope you guys are interested. Please don't forget to subscribe down below. I would really appreciate it. Hit that thumbs up if you like these types of videos. And let's go ahead and help you in. I'm not going to lie, I have this shirt on inside out. I'm like, the tag is driving me crazy. But I was like, you're not going to see it, you know? Um, so, anyways, first of all, let's kind of talk about terms in the beauty world. Um, I definitely got this idea because I'm like looking through stuff and I'm like, I don't actually know what that means. I feel like I know what it means, but then I'm like, if you were to ask me, I'd be like, I don't actually know what that means. Um, but especially when it comes to the differences between all the, all the things. Most of the time, like if you think of sustainability, if you think of green, any of those terms, it is a very wide umbrella to say the least. Like there's no actual like... Even the clean at Sephora, that doesn't mean that all experts believe that like clean is the right label or that it's, you know, clean is like the standard kind of thing. So that's where things get really confusing because you just don't know. Um, but for me, like I always thought like clean at Sephora, so I'm like, okay, there's nothing in here that's going to irritate me. Really, that's not true. <laughs> so let's go ahead and go through terms. So green products, like just Products to say that they're green. Green products are products that are either coming from the sea or the land. So think of more like plants or like we see a lot of like lotions, right? Whether it's like unbelievable seaweed or seawater or whatever. So that is what it's referring to when saying green. Sometimes green can also mean the packaging, like they look at trying to use recyclable material. Um, vegan does not contain any animal ingredients or animal derived ingredients. So like I said, this is not, just take this as it is because this is definitely not a judgment type video. I use products that are not clean. I use plant and animal products. <laughs> um, um, I, I would love to say that yes, I do try to choose the lesser of two evils, but can I say like, oh, I'm a cruelty free channel? I, I can't. Um, am I trying to work more towards that? Yes, I'll take baby steps. And I also try to do it in other areas of my life. So, you know, I feel like this can be a very judgy topic of like, you're not doing enough. And it's just kind of like, you don't know what people are doing behind the scenes to try to save. So, okay, I use my metal straws. <laughs> um, or well, my plastic straws, but I don't use the other ones, not my plastic straws. Okay, not about the straws, I use the metal ones. Anyways. So yeah, for me, I thought vegan and cruelty free were like the exact same things, but it's not. So companies that say that they're vegan can still be testing on animals. So cruelty free just means there's no animal testing at all throughout the entire process. So you have to look if you're trying to do both where it's you're looking if it's cruelty free or vegan. One can be without the other in terms of how they what they say that they are. You know, it doesn't have to be like, oh they're cruelty free so I would assume they're vegan. No. I mean I, I assume that. I was like wasn't all vegan cruelty free, but it's not. So that is definitely something that you would want to check out if you are trying to go that route. All right, and then we're going to talk about products that have like the little green check mark at Sephora. So if you go to like your Sephora basket, or you can even search clean at Sephora, and it has the little green check mark that appears. And this is what it will say underneath the green product where it says green at Sephora, that there's no more than 50 ingredients. And they are formulated without sulfates, parabens, phthalates, and more. It usually tells you, even it even says more to be like, check the ingredient of the product, which is even more confusing because I mean, I don't know about you guys, but we're not chemists. Um, that's another thing is I try to look at people's videos like um, Lab Muffin just did a video on alcohol in, in skincare and makeup products. So she's an actual chemist and that's, I find the whole topic like fascinating. Most of the things that they're saying they no longer use in terms of the clean Sephora, the phthalates and the sulfates, um, those have been used for a long time, like starting back to like 1930s, 1950s. Um, sulfates are still accepted as safe by the FDA. The FDA does not regulate much. That is the hard part with all of these things is the FDA really doesn't regulate anything. Um, I mean, I don't want to say that, but they don't do a great job. Um, 
for the FDA, there's only 11 ingredients, 11. Just look at like one product and see how many ingredients there are, and only 11 are actually banned to use in, in anything. So like even when I'm talking about FDA like for like my clients, because I am a personal trainer and they'll ask me about like, hey, what do you think of this supplement? What do you think of that? Should I be taking this? And I'm like, look, do your research on it. I was like, most of these are, if not all, are not approved by the FDA. Like, take your pick, you know? Like, I was just like, do, do your research. I was like, I don't, as a personal trainer, I try not to even get into that. And it's the same thing with like skincare, where I'm just like, this doesn't irritate me, but it could irritate you. So really getting to know yourself and what are irritants and then looking at an ingredients list. So yeah, sulfates are essentially detergents, um, which sounds bad, right? But it gives all of our products that nice lather. Not all of them, obviously, because now we're like trying to get away from them. But like, like soaps, shampoos, all that stuff that have that nice lather, that is from the sulfates. So pretty much any of these ingredients can be safe. It's not like they're all awful. And that's why I say I take it with like two grains of salt because most products just don't say how much they're using. They will give you specifics in terms of which sulfates and which parabens and everything, but nothing is, is completely clear. And I think that's, that's the biggest issue, right? Is like just not that transparency of like how much is going into this. But yeah, sulfates are what help get rid of dirt and oil, um, used a lot in hair products and obviously other ones as well. We all like a nice leather, if you will, but the downside is, is that they can be very stripping for your skin or your hair and you might end up way drier and red and itchy because of them. So it's, like I said, it's kind of that one thing. It's kind of like alcohol and makeup products where it's like, a little bit's probably fine. A lot is probably a big problem, you know? But I just feel like it can't be like cancel culture of everything right now. I'm just like, we need some of this stuff, okay? All right, so next up on the list, we have parabens. Parabens are used. Um, essentially to make your makeup last longer or your skincare or whatever it is to last longer. So it's preservatives and then, you know, it makes your makeup so it doesn't get all moldy or your skincare get moldy or it grow bacteria. Like I think of like a potato that I have downstairs like growing out like sprouts right now. It's like a half a tree. Okay. So in that aspect, am I like absolutely not? Like I don't want any parabens in there. I'm kind of like, we need them. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I can't be the only one that has, I definitely have products that are expired. Uh, I try not to use like expired skincare or anything like that, but like makeup, I'm, that's expired. So, and I'm not, I'm not willing to part with it yet. Okay. Don't judge me. Nasty. Don't judge me. Um, but yeah, so to me, I'm like, parabens are, I don't think they're the worst thing. I'd rather have that than have mold in a product and have it like, you know, buy a product and it go bad super fast. But again, that that is just me. Like I think of a lot of these terms and like, I just compare everything to food because I'm just like, that's like saying, you know, no processed food. Well, processed food is there so that you can eat it months from now. Or in the case of like, you know, a Twinkie years from now. And guess what? I haven't died yet. So I'm not saying that there any of these things are good for you. I'm just kind of letting you know what they are and why they're even used because that was the thing I didn't understand. I'm like, why do we use these things? Why are they end products? So one of the issues in terms of parabens is now that we keep saying that we can't use these certain products or these certain ingredients is that now they're going to synthetic forms. And to me, I would rather know what's going into it than have the synthetic forms that still haven't even been studied. Whereas these are just ones that could possibly cause irritation. Um, but that's, like I said, it's my personal thing, okay? Doesn't have to be yours. So the last category we have are phthalates, and those are a chemical group of plastics that make products more flexible. So phthalates are stuff that can be used to create a nice film on the hair when turning to hairspray, make products less stiff and more elastic. So I would say out of all of them, I'm like, I don't even know which one's scary. The, <laughs> maybe the first and the last one. The preservatives, I'm kind of like, all right, I kind of need that. Like. I, I, you know, I don't mind that as much, but this is definitely one that I'm just like, I don't know about the chemicals. Um, and then I realize like how many chemicals are actually in everything else I use and I'm like, okay. Um, but the main concern with phthalates is generally main concern is actually pregnant women using phthalates. Um, and then certain phthalates are linked to cancer, which nowadays I think a lot is linked to cancer. So I even had a girl come up to me in Costco and was like, your phone is too close to your skin. And I was like, 
I mean, I said thank you, you know, but I was also like, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, so those are the things that Sephora is saying that like their list doesn't include. Um, so the parabens, the phthalates, and like I said, there's a reason why these things are used. I'm not saying we shouldn't come up with better solutions, but I'm also having now having a better understanding of why they're used, you know? I'm just like, oh, that makes sense. Okay, so let's get back to clean at Sephora. Another one of the things they say is that they are allowed to have synthetic fragrances um, under 1%. So I don't like that rule. Um, I feel like clean at Sephora should be no fragrance. You guys saw me do the by Beauty Foundation and I was like, this is heavily fragranced. Like I don't even understand the 1%. Like I'm like, how? How is 1% like that potent? I don't have a great nose, okay? Like I'm not one of those people that can just smell things from a mile away. I'm just, I'm never, no. My mom has no sense of smell. My sister has no sense of smell. Like they can smell nothing. Like we even tested out once, like Katie, my other sister, like farted in the car and rolled up the windows to see if she would make, you know, like say anything. She's like, she didn't. She kept a straight face the whole time. So yeah, we're not strong sniffers in my family, but certain products, I'm like, how? How is it only 1% of fragrance? Like I don't understand that. So synthetic is just meaning that they're chemical fragrances. However, it is fine in terms of the Clean Sephora to have essential oils, which don't get me wrong, I love the scent of like essential oils. I love going to a spa. Like Nick goes and gets his, uh, he's gonna hate me for saying this, but he goes and gets his ears uh, waxed. Waxed, he's doing the laser hair removal for his ears. Anyways, I love to go and I'm like, I'm just gonna go to the bathroom because I love walking just past, I can't afford the massage, but I like to just walk through the hallway because I'm just like, oh, it smells amazing in here. Um, so I like the smell and that's the thing is that's why I'm saying I'm a little bit hypocritical with certain things because I'm like, yeah, I try not to use fragrance, but every once in a while, like, I don't think I could give up fragrance in like my body shit, like my body wash. Like I try to definitely avoid it for the face. There are still some things I have and as long as they don't cause irritation, I'm okay with it. But that's going to be very hard for me to give up. Like I like things that smell good. Okay. I do. Um, but it can be very irritating to the skin, very irritating to the face. So definitely look at the essential oils that something has in it because that could be a reason why you're breaking out. Um, people have a lot of sensitivities. Like I love the Caudalie peppermint spray. It's so nice and refreshing. The smell, oh, mm, so good. But that's one where people generally have more sensitivity to minty type extracts. Um, but yeah, essential oils, even though they're natural, they're, uh, doesn't mean they're good for your skin. They can definitely be very, very irritating ingredients. So to me, I just feel like the clean at Sephora mark, or maybe they should have a very clean section, but it should be free of any fragrances, whether it's synthetic and then also do like an essential oil free site. Like it's, it's a lot to try to research products and I'm just kind of like, could you make this easier? Okay. So overall, like right now Sephora has 2000 products that are labeled clean. That is a lot of products that I feel like there's no way they're all clean. Um, I think it's a step in the right direction. I don't blame this on Sephora. I definitely am just like, look at all the products that we have coming out now. Like there are new products every single day, every day there's new products coming out and everything's supposed to be amazing. Like I kind of feel like, you know, if you guys like these types of video, I'd love to do one just focusing on specific ingredients. Like CBD, is in like every skincare product right now. Like that's like the new thing, right? Like hemp, CBD oil, CBD infused, and like just the claims that all this stuff makes. And then when you actually research it, you're like, oh, it's not actually proven yet to do any of these beneficial things. Why are you gonna charge me $78 for that? So I just really like to learn about this stuff and I hope you guys do too. And like I said, take it all with a grain of salt, right? I'm, I'm happy that they're making a step in the right direction to give us cleaner products. I don't even know if I like the word cleaner products. Um, but to me, I feel like clean should encompass like nothing that could probably possibly irritate your skin. So free of all fragrances, not the 1%. I really don't believe the 1%. <laughs> um, and then also have essential oil free, like do a whole section where it's just those things. And like I said, I'm hypocritical of those because yeah, sometimes I, when I use a skincare product or a different product, sometimes I like the scent. And it's, it's part of the whole experience of using that product. But I also know how many people have like irritation with it. Also, you know, the ones that I'm like, I don't want dry and itchiness or 
I don't want cancer either. Um, but I also feel like, you know, sometimes we're really quick to jump on each other for these things. And I'm like, you're going to bother me about this and then you're going to eat this. Or like, you know, it's just, uh, it's kind of a whole thing. So like I said, I'm trying to look more into these products. To me, I would just really go through an ingredients list. I know it's very annoying to do that, but that's what I've started to do. I've started to put a little bit more research in it and then like really try to figure out what could possibly irritate my skin and that way I know, hey, this is just not a product for me and unfortunately like I cannot use it. All right, so this definitely just scratched the surface of this stuff. If you are more interested, I'm super interested in this stuff, so let me know and I will definitely do more videos and let me know exactly which product you want me to do some research on. Um, I'm not an expert of that stuff in any kind of way. But yeah, I hope you guys found it interesting and I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. Please don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Alright, next up on the list we have Paradit. Paradit. Phthalates. <laughs>